I think that when you're little, obviously you like see people and you want to be them. Like a little boys want to be Ronaldo or they want to be Messi. And girls, they want to be Alex Morgan or they want to be Mia Hamm. And so I think that at some level, I was like, of course I want to do that. But then as life goes on and you realize how hard it is to actually do that. So to be like the top goal scorer, no, I didn't, I didn't like set that goal out. I was more of, I'm gonna work my butt off every single day. I'm gonna give it my all. I really love this game. So no, I don't think I ever like thought I was gonna do it, um, but I did it. Cerrar los ojos y viajar a tu infancia. Ni siquiera importa si los recuerdos son alegres. Es un viaje a la inocencia, a los más puros sentimientos, para encontrar las raíces de la pasión. Para Lynn Williams, su infancia describe quién es hoy. Tristezas, alegrías que marcan su personalidad, siempre con un mismo fin, superarse. Siempre. My first memories of playing was when I was five years old. Um, I was a kid who had a lot of energy and my parents um, were like, we just gotta get her into some sport, we gotta get this energy out. And so they signed me up for soccer at my elementary school. And from there, it kind of just stuck. My mom was a heptathlete and my dad uh, was a sprinter and also a, a football player there. And then I have like, uncles who have played in the NFL on my dad's side. I come from an athletic family, but I'm the first person in my family to play soccer. Un legado de una familia de deportistas. Raíces con una herencia que también serviría de aprendizaje. My dad is originally uh, born in Arkansas and then moved to Huron. Um, my grandparents on my dad's side were sharecroppers, so at the time they wanted to get away from segregation and they basically just did really well for themselves. Came from like a poor background, ended up going to Fresno State to, like I say, play football, but then ended up running track in the spring. Met my mom and then my dad actually had to drop out of college to work because he just came from a poor family. He needed to feed himself. And they had me and my sister, and I think they've done really, really well. El contexto ofrecía un aprendizaje con base en el sacrificio, una infancia en la que Lynn sería testigo indirecta de una tragedia. Oh, it's a tremendous hit right here. You see him filling the hole against Kerry Carter, but right there he lowers his head. Kerry Carter with 235 pounds running at him. Put a lot of stress on him. Looks like he made it. Growing up when I was eight years old, my dad is one of eight. He had a younger brother who went to the University of Washington, played football, and actually got into a freak accident on the football field, a head-to-head -head collision, and ended up severing his spinal cord from C1 and C2. So he was paralyzed from the neck down. Just to watch my parents handle that situation, my grandparents, they didn't have the means or the capability to take that on. And for some reason, my dad was always seen as like the next father figure in his family. And so my uncle moved into the home with us and see how my parents navigated that, how they wanted me and my sister to continue to have a normal childhood and not really have to think about it while also caring for somebody who is literally on basically life support every single day and watching nurses come in and out. And it's my dad's brother, so it's very emotional. Curtis Williams, el tío de Lynn, falleció en 2002. Un cambio en la vida familiar, pero también una lección. Vivir de cerca una lesión tan traumática causada por el deporte. ¿Quién iba a pensarlo? Las lesiones iban a ser un desafío para Lynn en su carrera profesional. Una vez, y otra, y otra, y otra más.
I feel like any injury you have is a really hard moment to realize that you're so close to something and then you get injured and it's all gone in a moment. In 2016, um, I hurt my knee. All my friends were getting invited to camp and uh, had a chance to go to the Olympics. And I was sitting there with like, uh, just had knee surgery and I was like, I can't even prove myself. Um, they, they're over there and I'm just hearing a knee brace. And then I switched my mindset to, you know what, Lynn, like you didn't start playing soccer because you wanted to be on the national team. You didn't start playing soccer because to go to the Olympics. You started because you just loved the game. And then once I was at the national team, I think that I wanted that so badly that I was like gripping it in my hands and I just like was watching it slip away. Perderse los eventos más destacados por lesiones. Cuando el poder de la mente juega un rol preponderante. Y nuevamente, en esta última etapa, por una nueva lesión, estuvo a punto de perderse la próxima Copa del Mundo. I knew it was bad when it happened, but I, in my brain, was trying to downplay it and say, no, it's going to be fine, it's going to be fine, it's just a pulled muscle. But in the back of my mind, I was like, no, I just ripped my hamstring off the bone. I was like an alternate at the Olympics, and I, I didn't want to feel that feeling again of like just missing it. I felt like I had just missed it, so this time I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a big push to make this World Cup roster. Unluckily, I have been through so many injuries before that I know what it takes to like get back. I was like, I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to grind and I'm just going to try. I'm going to give it my all and if I make this team, I make it and if I don't, my life will go on like it always has. Um, but that's what I did. I just got up every day and I was like, I'm going to grind. Abandonar. Jamás. Retroceder solo para tomar impulso. Lynn usó máscaras, férulas, hizo tratamientos, recuperaciones, aguantó dolores y acumula cicatrices. Nada, nunca podrá tapar los momentos de gloria. Jugar para dejar una huella en el deporte. Un fútbol que está cambiando en su país. Un fútbol inclusivo. Donde ahora, ser una referente y una imagen para la sociedad de su país también es parte de su legado. Growing up, I didn't really see a lot of people who looked like me in soccer. I feel like the next generation growing up in soccer right now is very lucky and very blessed to see so many women of color out there. But when I was growing up, that wasn't the case at all. Um, and Brianna Scurry was one of the only women that I saw that even remotely rem uh, resembled me. So um, I felt like because she was in the space that I wanted to be in, I felt like I belonged and I felt like there was a space for me. El recorrido, los anhelos, las referentes. Ahora se viene un nuevo desafío. Uno con una presión diferente, hermosa, desmedida. Every soccer player wants to play in a World Cup and to represent your country. Um, and I don't even know how to, like, there's no words that you can describe it. When I'm happy, when I'm playing my best, there's no pressure. It's just fun soccer and... That's all I got. <laughs>